Hi, this is Eric Martin with Game Geek News here with Alban in the uh, Heidelberger booth at Nuremberg 2013. We're actually looking at Bora Bora, Steffenfeld game by Alia, which is going to hit the market, I believe, uh, in a couple of weeks. I don't know if you... Yeah. In about two weeks it will be in the, in the stores. In the European market, I should mention. The US market is still a few months down the road and we do this. But, in any case, we're hoping we can get an overview of the game. Maybe we can show off. We got the final version here. Yes, that's right. It's the final version. Um, this is the main board for, for all the players in the middle of the table. Um, there's the, the island of Bora Bora. Um, each player starts with one house on, in, in one area of the island. Then there's uh, the, the turn track with six turns. Each column represents one turn. And some other areas, which I will explain later. Then each player has one player board for each player. On the player board there's an area for the houses they are not yet, that are not yet built. Every time you build a house you um, have new space for persons to live. So if you want to have a person you need to have space first. Then here's the ceremonial area. It's um, like a palace that you build for victory points. Um, the game turn is uh, three phases, A, B, C. The first phase is the action phase. Each player throws his three action dice in his, in his player color. And then um, you place the dice to take actions. These are the action tiles, representing the different actions. The f this action here is um, a um, expand action, expand by C, that's a blue arrow, so you find a blue arrow here on the, on the game board. Now, if I put a 6 here, I can expand um, like here or lower, so 6 is perfect because I can use any um, C expand arrow. Okay. With the 1, I can only expand here. Um, there's a restriction when placing action dice. I have to place a die that's lower than the last the lowest die already there. So if a player goes in with a one at the start of the action phase, it's it's blocked. You're locked up. Yes. The other actions are expand um, by by land connection, then uh, take a, take a man. Every turn there are six new um, persons, men and women, and you can take one and place uh, onto your. And again, this is from four or lower. Four or lower. That's right. Um, they will perform bonus actions in a later phase of the game. Same for women here. Then this is a um, general buy action. Um, there are different things that you can buy with these points. So if you put a four here, you've got f uh, four points to buy things. For example, you can buy resources that will be uh, that you need to build your ceremonial place. You can uh, buy god cards, which I will explain shortly. You can buy sacrifice tokens, which you need to play the god cards, or you can uh, buy this action, the action to move a hut um, on your player board, so you make room for new persons without actually expanding on the on the board. Um, then there's um, for one point you can buy the action um, tattoo a man. The man is tattooed. This means um, you move him on the board down here. That's, you can do that once per game with every person. If you do it with a man, you will get the tattoos. On the left side, there's three tattoos. You put the tattoos on the tattoo track, so you put your marker on the three space, three tattoos. And this determines the player order for the next turn. And you can get some victory points there. The women, if you uh, use this uh, action on the women, you will receive shells. And you need shells um, to buy jewelry in a later phase, which also gives you victory points. Um, well, you can also buy victory points, um, but that's just for change. Um, then here's the action build um, ceremonial place. With a four, you can build a four or lower tile. You have to have resources here, two adjacent resources, then you put it. In that, in that spot, remove the resources, and now you score victory points. In this case, um, you score 10 victory points in the first two turns, then 7, then 4. The earlier you build this, this um, ceremonial place, the, the more victory points you will get. Um, also, you get one bonus 
this um, this fire. It's a fire. fire. Yes, the fire is is a bonus. You see the bonus here. It's one card or one sacrifice plus one um, tattoo or one shell. And finally, there's the temple. The temple is on the the main player board. If you um, yeah, if you play the temple action, you can put a priest into the temple. Each player has four um, priest figures. And every time you play this action, you put one here. With a four, you would put him in the four space. This means all the others are moved down and um, yeah, the ones on the one drop out. Every figure on, in the temple will give you one victory point in the first two turns, then two, and then three in the last two turns. Also, you will get a, a, a super god, that, that's uh, this token here. You can use it as any god, um, or you can keep it for victory points at the end of the game. Um, yes, the, the gods are used to... Um, yes, these cards are the gods. There's always an open display um, of five or six gods in the, in the game, so you can choose from them or take a, a random one. The blue god, um, which you see over there, allows you to put a die on an action tile um, which is greater or, or equal to, an, to a die already being there. So you can circumvent the, the restriction. Then the white god um, lets you use a die as if it was a six, so you place a one with a white god and now the one um, stays here, but you can use it as a six. Then there's the red god. The red god gives you victory points when expanding. Normally these um, fish tiles here are the victory points that are scored at the end of the game for the player being on the resource um, spot of the area, which is always the last player having expanded into the, into the area. And if you have to expand into an area early in the game, you can use the Red God to score the victory points just then. Yes, that was the, the first phase, the uh, action phase. The next phase is the, the person phase. Um, every type, no, one type of man and one type of, of, of woman um, can perform their, their bonus action. Uh, in this case here, I have two women of the exact same type, so they can combine their action um, to give me two resources of my choice. So, I, In this case I have a, a man uh, which allows me an uh, expand by C action with a value of two, which is uh, not very much, but then there's the, there's the green god. <clears throat> I can use the green god card to double the effect of a man or woman action, so I can double the two to a four, or I can double uh, this effect to get four resources instead of just two. And finally, there's the um, phase C. It's a resolution phase of some, some kind. You get victory points for the tattoos and the new player order is determined. Then you get victory points for the temple and you get the, the super god token. Then you can buy jewelry, one um, piece of jewelry for each player. Each and whatever else isn't bought is thrown out and so that serves as the turn one. Yeah. Right, that's right. And finally, there's uh, the task or quest phase. Every player, yeah, there are supposed to be six um, tasks, which you can choose from after you have um, completed or thrown away one of your um, current tasks. There are a couple of um, easy ones in the game for the first turn. So every player gets one first turn task and two tasks for later. Um, this task, for example, says you, I need to have one man and I need to be start player for the next turn. If I, if I um, yeah, have this uh, in this phase, I score six victory points um, and put it on my completed tasks stack. And as soon as you have an empty spot, you can now, and now, and now you can choose get the next task. Yeah. And it's, it's good to be a um, start player at this moment because the, the tasks are, some are very um, are not easy to, to achieve, others are more easy for me, so it's, it's good to be first to pick. You can always uh, choose which task to complete, and you see the tasks of the other players. So. And we go through six rounds. Uh, we're earning points during the game for various things. Uh, we're also earning points, I guess, at the end for the jewelry. And yes, at the end there's, a, there's an end scoring. Um, 
after the, the sixth turn, uh, every player is left with three tasks because every time you put one away, you take another one. So all players can complete all the, the tasks. So it's possible to complete not nine tasks. If you do that, you get bonus victory points. You also get bonus points if you uh, have six um, pieces of jewelry. That means you bought one every turn. And if you uh, filled your ceremonial place with resources, if it's completed, you get bonus points. There's a lot of different bonus points you can get. And uh, then there's the, the final scoring for the resource areas, which give different um, um, values of victory points between one and six. That's also in the final scoring. So it sounds, I mean, this sounds like the, the sort of level of Trajan, where you have like a million things going on at once. That's, yeah, that's, you have a million uh, things going on. You have a, a million ways to, to get victory points um, to choose from, and, and they all work. And But, but then you, you have, this is what you have. This is what you have to work with, at least, yes, for each, yeah. each time. This, these are your actions, basically. But you can expand them by getting persons who do extra actions for you, and you can build combos with the persons, and uh, well, you can go into this ceremonial place early to make a lot of, of victory points, and you're Always um, have to look at the other players, what they are doing, because sometimes you can interfere with their plans quite easily by just placing a die on a, on a spot which helps you a little and um, hurts him a lot. So. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks very much for the overview. You're welcome. Thank you.